is that do we usually have that light on yeah we do okay that's just my normal display. i just then i just look exceptionally tired <laughs> i look so y'all i'm so tired today i got all the lights yeah the normal lights on it's just my face <laughs> And that's just my face. You guys, I'm wearing the shirt that we got yesterday. I love it. Hug me. I'm asymptomatic. I love Thank it. you, Steve. <laughs> guys, I am so tired. So I apologize for my face <laughs> in advance. <laughs> now everybody's going to be like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. You're so No, 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 no. Oh no, God. I'm not fishing for compliments. I mean, I really can tell that I'm tired. I can tell by my eyes. Like, they're not, they're not open. They're not open. Sorry. <laughs> So anyway, because um, I slept maybe three hours last night. I just couldn't sleep. Because uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm not right. Everything is Everything wrong is this wrong. week. Everything is wrong. I got people who normally love me coming at me bra <laughs> on social media. It's been a tough week, okay? It's because it's, it's a lot of young people in my life who are, they're just like really supporting this whole BLM movement. And I don't think they understand they what the movement is. It's one thing to love, it's, it's one thing to support black people, right? And to say black lives matter. And I get that. I get saying black lives matter. But when you support a movement, that is an entirely different thing because I don't think they're separating the two. I don't think they understand the difference. I really don't think they understand it. I don't think people understand it, Mark. <laughs> I've been and talking I, about this since you were gone. I know. I don't, and I don't, and I don't, they don't. and I don't, don't think people out there are talking about it enough for fear of being called racist. This is the problem: is that conservatives are so scared of talking about this because if they talk about it, then then people will go, "You're so racist," and so they're afraid. They're so afraid to talk out loud about this movement, you know, because it's a movement, y'all. It's a Marxist rooted movement it's it's a bunch of communists that are trying to destroy the country and, and this isn't tinfoil hat stuff this no. is like us listening to the co-founder of one of the most prominent blm organizations one that people are sending money to thinking they're donating to like a, a charity or something where really they're just like funneling money to democrats to help get them elected in the hopes that they'll get further and further to the left and really just do away with police, with capitalism, with everything that makes yeah. this country great. They don't care about black people. No. <laughs> they don't give two craps about black people. That's just the cause du jour to help and them so, achieve their goals. So these kids, these, you know, just out of college kids think, oh my God, I'm being so nice and so good. I'm the good one. I'm the benevolent one because I'm, you know, I'm with the movement. No. And they're saying things like, history needs to be rewritten. rewritten. You know, because we've been taught the whitewashed version of history. This is what people, kids that I love, are saying. And, I, and I'm trying to tell them, listen, there is a different, and they are not listening. They're not listening. Because they look at me like, you're just a giant racist. You're just an old white lady. You're an old <laughs> white racist is what they're That's saying. That's what we are now. That's what I am. That's what I've become to them. And I, and I just, it, I lose sleep over this. I lose sleep over it. Because I, they just, and I try to tell them, listen, y'all weren't taught to think critically. You're watching all the shit that you shouldn't be watching. You need to think critically. Think for yourself, please, for the love of God, think for yourself. And they won't do it. They won't do it. They just, they're like, you're old and white. You're <laughs> and racist. And racist. Because that's no, what we that's, get now. No. Think, think about, look at people in Venezuela that are telling you, that are begging you to just not repeat history. Mm -hmm. Learn from the mistakes that other countries have made. Other countries who yeah. are in a world of hurt. They, and for some reason, we got everybody on the left here being like, let's go do those things. Yeah, let's do what Venezuela did when, when Cuba was like, uh, y'all need to not do this. And Venezuela was like, this won't happen to us. And look it's at them fine. now. And we we're, we're doing the same dang thing. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, that's why I'm tired. Um, <laughs> Anyway, All right, so can we, we can we quickly yes, this, listen that. quickly. We need to um, tell you guys we have a store, <laughs> I, we've, we've and we never, make like a dollar fifty anytime you guys buy something. Yeah, we which do. is really helpful. Yeah, we don't really make any money off of it. We never have, but um, you know, every once in a while we'll make like I don't know thirty bucks a month. And it's it, amazing. And it's kind of helpful because right now we're not doing so hot on social media. So yeah, <laughs> so which we're gonna get into. So it, anyway, so we have a store, and there's some stuff in it. I, I added two because I do our store, and I I added two um, two design designs. <laughs> 
in there this weekend. One is this is what a um, this is what a conservative looks like, and ask me about my conservatism. In there. <laughs> and then there's there's a there's some cute stuff in there. There's like deplorable, and there's um, and you've got our logo, right? Our logo. There's logo stuff in there. There's a, some really cute like there's one in there that says like coffee, dogs, freedom, cocktails. There's some really cute stuff in there, and you can so, get to it if you go to our website. There's a link right at the top of the homepage that says store. Yeah. And it'll take you to the thing. Yeah. So we're capitalists. <laughs> we just wanted to remind people because... I don't um, think people know. You know, if you, if you want to get you know. something, then we get a tiny, tiny, itsy, bitsy <laughs> little percentage yeah, here, of that. And they, there's another one that says America on it, which I love. That's one yeah. of my favorite ones. But... Um, funny story, and then we'll move on. But but Spreadshirt, I don't know why, but we used to have one in there that says 2A is Bay, <laughs> which is really cute. We had some really cute 2A stuff in there. They took the 2A stuff down. Don't know why. They don't like the 2A stuff in there. And I they just randomly take They stuff, will randomly stuff down. take my crap down. And I... But the 2A... So I don't have a lot of 2A stuff in there, and it's not because I don't want it in there. It's just that they... They willy nilly <laughs> decide what they're gonna allow in there because they have like a, I guess a, a, I don't know, some some sort of Hunger Games like, <laughs> like administrative group of, uh, yeah, of people that are like, we're not gonna let you put the two A stuff in, here. and then they will take that stuff down. So anyway, if you if you ask me, hey, put some two A stuff in there, yeah, I'd love to do that, but they'll probably um, take it out. So anyways, um, so yeah, we have a store. So go to it and, and yeah. help us make a dollar fifty. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> um, okay, you guys. So Twitter. We got locked down on Twitter. It's happened to us. Yesterday, like it was crazy censorship day, Carpe Donctum got officially permanently banned, which is a big deal because, you know, he's the guy that makes the funny little videos, the parody videos, and then Trump is constantly retweeting them. Like he's a big deal and donezo. Like permanently, it's not a warning. It's He's gone. So he's on Parlor. And by the way, yes, we're on Parlor. I just don't go to it because it's like one more place to go. So I don't have anything out there. But we do have an account there. And when shit hits the fan, we'll go there instead because obviously we won't have Twitter anymore. Mm -hmm. But we still have Twitter. This morning, I go in, get onto Twitter, get a big screen that says, you're locked out. And you know why? It's because I wrote a tweet to a complete random stranger uh, who was insulting me in early May. Uh, I had actually retweeted something from that psycho Amy Siskin because she was mad at Mitch McConnell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was mad at Mitch McConnell over COVID. Like, Mitch McConnell was like, Democrats need to get some freaking legislation together for these businesses that are crumbling because this was May, right? Mm -hmm. This is when everything was shut down. Yeah. And so um, she wrote something just awful, blaming Mitch McConnell essentially for people dying because this is what Democrats do. Yeah. And so I responded to that tweet and I just said something like, this is total bad shittery, it's ridiculous, whatever. So this random stranger named Angie, she responds to my tweet back to Amy Siskin, and she says, sorry, don't you think you mean hashtag Moscow Mitch doesn't pass anything? Don't blame the Democrats, you Kool-Aid drinking Karen. So <laughs> she called, <laughs> that was really original. Right. So I she mean, called me like Karen, really and great. so I thought, well, you know, I'm gonna, I will, I looked at her, I looked at her feed, every tweet of hers is so horribly insulting to people, and she uses really nasty. Like the C word and everything, yeah. Like the worst of the words, yeah. right? Yeah, um, And so I wrote back to her, and I made a play on the whole Beyonce song with the, Becky with the good hair, and, cause she didn't really have good hair, and so I said, <laughs> hey, sorry about your bad hair, Becky. And then I blocked her. That was it. That's that's what I wrote. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in the world of insults, it's not. It wasn't that. It's pretty it tame. I thought it was pretty tame too. It's pretty. I tame. mean, she could have used the c word back. Yeah, I could have for all intents and purposes. But she I didn't. done that. But she didn't because you she know. called me Karen. I called her Becky. You that's got, it. She called you a what? A, something. Not me. She had called other people like c words and t words. Yeah, and, but I mean, yeah. She called me a Karen. Yeah. I called her a Becky. I felt like it was pretty even. I felt so. Yeah, that's so and then what? I blocked her. And so I didn't see her response, which was basically to say, and I'm not making this up. She retweeted my response and said, throwing hair insults to an alopecia sufferer is so on brand. And I was like, I didn't see that until today. Like, I never saw that until today because I went and investigated why Twitter took down my Becky with the bad hair tweet. Okay, so apparently she has alopecia. And I'm supposed to know that. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it didn't know that. And so 
Twitter mm -hmm. says they they on my screen it says here's the tweet that is mm -hmm. in violation of our policies. You yeah. said sorry about your bad hair, Becky. We can't have that on Twitter. Yeah. Never mind the fact that John Henson is saying about Baron Trump that he doesn't know who who the father is. Mm -hmm. Right. People are horrible on Twitter. Yeah. Horrible. I mean, they basically say they want to kill Trump. Yeah. There, like are, every there day. are sites that are like devoted to that. <laughs> right. She said this chick had bad hair. On, she didn't know her medical history. <laughs> right. Even though we're supposed to like delve into that. <gasps> I didn't know that that was the case, but apparently we're supposed to know that. We're supposed to know that. So, um, yeah. so then it said, it said you, okay, so you can't get into Twitter unless you either appeal this decision or remove the tweet. And I didn't give a crap. I mean, this was a, this was a two month old conversation. This woman is of no consequence to me. So I was happy to delete it because it's over, right? Like, I mean, that that ship has sailed. Yeah. So I deleted it, got right back in, and then investigated this whole thing and could not believe her timeline and all the stuff that is allowed to stand while I get locked out for saying that she had bad hair. You should, you should have said, my real name is Karen and I'm offended by that. <laughs> This is blatant yeah. targeting it is. of conservatives, It totally you guys. is, you guys. They're, just, they're trying to find excuses to shut people down. And this is the first step. So just expect that we'll be shut down on yeah, Twitter it's soon. it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Because I'm going to write about it, and mm -hmm. then Twitter's going to get mad about me writing yep, about it. Yeah, we're going to so. get shut down soon. So just expect it. I mean, we get dinged all the time on Facebook. All, all the, the time. time. <laughs> all the time. We were the originals to get shut down on Facebook. Remember? I mean, it's, it's one of the reasons we're on the radio right now. It That's, really is. It is. It's one of the reasons we're on the radio because we got a, we got a big target on us because we were like, uh-uh. And we went on a big PR blitz. We were like, you are not going to shut us down, bitches. This was in January yeah. of 2013. Yeah. And so we, we were trailblazers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before it was cool to get shut down. We, we got, were getting shut down forever ago. We got shut down. And so we just went on a tear because we were like, we are not having it. This is America, man. And we just went crazy. And so we, everybody was like, oh, these ladies in Indiana got shut down. I was like, this is unheard of. It was a big so, deal back in the day. Yeah, and now every all conservatives are getting shut down. And they're you know? doing it like in a little trickle, right? They're doing it in a slow trickle. It's yeah. not like they're just mass, because they know it would look bad if they just mass deleted everybody. Mm -hmm. But they're doing it little by little so that we all are just like, oh, wow, that really sucks. And then we forget about it the next day and mm -hmm. move on with our lives. Yeah. And so this is what's happening is that people are going to Parlor. We're out there. If you want to follow us on Parlor, you can. I'm not posting any content there yet. Yeah. But I mean, if this crap continues to happen, we're going to have to, right? They're totally suppressing conservatives, y'all. If you think control. it's not real, and liberals will be like, that's not happening. <laughs> that's the, they're just the making it up. It's like a tinfoil hat thing. Yeah, bull crap. <laughs> you know why they don't think it's happening? Because it's not happening to them. That's, that's right. That's why they think it's not happening. Yeah, because they're exempt. They're exempt from the suppression. That's why they think it's not happening. But it's happening to us, and it's happening to all sorts of conservatives. They're, they're getting shut down left and right. Ask Carpe Donctum. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a bad. bunch of crap. And I'm like, he's not the only... It's so many conservatives have Well, I mean, you, you guys heard what happened to the Federalist and their fight with Google. And, I mean, it's getting... It's, mm -hmm. it's heating up. And I, ho I hope that it stories like that continue to happen yeah. just to keep it in the news. Because as long as we have Trump for president, I hope that's not just for this year. Yeah. But as long as we have him, then hopefully there's a push to make some changes to yeah. how this but all operates. If we lose him, then we're done. You're going to see a whole lot of conservatives go away. And, and on social media platforms across the board. I mean, that's just, I'm not trying to be Debbie Downer here, but if Biden wins, you're going to see a whole lot of this go away. Yeah. They're going to start, because once you, because statues are coming down, you're going to, I mean, that's just the beginning, man. Like it's, it's, I'm not trying, listen, I'm not even trying to be alarmist. I just, it's, I'm just being for real. Yeah. Like that's what you're going to start seeing because they're going to be like, we can't have those voices out there because they're owie to my they're ears. Hateful. They're hateful. It's, racist. We were reported the other day as hate speech. This is, this is what liberals think. It's, it's freaking mental. <laughs> You know, this is what they, they think. They think we are hate speech because we just have a, a dissenting opinion. It's this is a, this is what America has become. You can't have a dissenting opinion than the group think. And if you dissent, they will they want to shut you down. And not only do they want to shut you down, they want to destroy you. Right. It's not enough to just silence you. Mm -hmm. Everything that you know and love has to be destroyed. Be destroyed. Yeah, be destroyed. So, they want to destroy your business. They want to destroy your life. They want to destroy your family. This is what they want to do. They will come for you. So, you know, this is why... Concern 
If you don't think that's true, this is why conservatives are afraid. This is why they're afraid to speak up. This is why they don't talk on, on social media because they're afraid of getting fired from their jobs. They're afraid of getting canceled. This and is, rightly so because yeah. it happens constantly. Yeah, because liberals are maniacs. Um, we need to talk about Bubba because oh, Bubba. you guys... Last night, so the FBI released a statement about Bubba Wallace and NASCAR saying, okay, we've done our investigation. Turns out that noose that was in uh, Bubba Wallace's garage stall has been there since October of 2019, well before any of this Black Lives Matter movement stuff came to a head. But, but it's still a noose. <laughs> well, still they, I don't know, because they the original investigation summary was like, this was just a pull rope for the garage, this is, and it's been there. And back in October of 2019, no one had any idea that he would be assigned specifically to that stall. That's just not how it works. So the FBI concluded, this is nothing. This was not an intentional hate crime of any kind. It's over. And so now all of a sudden they don't want to trust the FBI. <laughs> well, NASCAR does. Like, I mean, NASCAR was fine. Okay, great. Glad that the investigation proved that, you know, our worst fears did not come true. Mm -hmm. And so, yay. Um, however, Bubba is pissed. And he went on Don Lamon last night who basically acted like his personal therapist. Yeah, it was like a therapy session rather than an interview. But and I mean, he's mad because he believes that people are going after his integrity. Mm -hmm. And, so, you know, because a lot of people on Twitter are like, you're Jesse Smollett, you're a hoax creator, blah. And so and he, I think his appearance made him look ten times worse. I think so, too. Because he should have just said, wow, I'm so relieved that this was an overreaction by mm -hmm. me and yeah. by so many other people. Yay. Yeah. But he's insisting still. That it was a noose. Yeah, he is. He oh is. God. I mean, it's and and he was like, "Listen, I'm not the one who who did this. It was the president of NASCAR who called me in and and said this is what." It, and he's crying and he's like, "You know, this is what this is a this is a noose, and it was left for you. Specifically. And it was for you. And I believe this is a hate crime. Let's have it investigated. In the meantime, let's have all this." You know, let's have all the drivers gather around and we're all, you know, oh my God, I can't believe this happened <laughs> to you. Oh my God. And so, and so they did that and then come to find out it wasn't, but yet he's still perpetuating the notion that it is. So and he's furious. Like if you watch that interview, it's on our website, chicksontheright.com. He's mad. Like he's legit disappointed that, apparently that it, was, that it wasn't that a hate it crime. Wasn't. Yeah. Or that it wasn't deemed a hate crime. I, I, I don't know. If you're a normal person, aren't you going to be like, wow, what a relief. Yeah, because you, you know? believe in the goodness of people. Right. Why this do you is, want it to be what you thought it was? Yeah, this is the thing. I, it's like, I don't, and, and don't you think that we all should believe in the goodness of people and the goodness of Americans at this point where we're like, that's awesome. It's just a freaking rope. <laughs> it's just a and rope in like, a garage. Well, my crew chief said... That is not a simple knot that gets tied in just a few minutes, and it's totally a noose. Well, maybe your crew chief is annoying, and maybe <laughs> wrong. He's wrong. Maybe he's just wrong because it looks. I don't know if you guys have seen pictures. It literally looks like a garage pole. That's it. It looks like nothing. I know. And he's like, I've seen the pictures, and it. I mean, it's just devastating how noosey it is. It's yeah. It's Enemies. so dumb. This whole thing is so dumb. Hi, Rob. Hey. It just plays more into this, this, the, the past couple weeks. Just the past couple weeks. This is why she loses sleep. This is why I'm not sleeping. I just, and, and you know what? This is what our kids are seeing. This is what the young adults are seeing. This is, this is their America. This is the idea of their America. Well, it's a bunch of crap. And the race baiters, Al Sharpton, the typical race baiters. Of course, he is out he is there out th up front. He's out there, and he's saying, and he said this on MSNBC. Oh, crap, it went away. But he said on MSNBC, well, now, you know, now we just have to figure out why the noose was placed there. <laughs> I mean, can we just stop? Oh, my God. The investigation is over. It's not a freaking noose. I just, I can't. I can't. <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. Well, we need to, re I guess we need to defund ropes <laughs> and, and, and remove all ropes. <laughs> ban, ban all ropes. ropes. All ropes need to go away. Yeah, because what if they and We need like to nooses? topple the ropes. We need to just take them all down. <laughs> we can't have ropes. <laughs> what are you wow. doing? You brought some Pepsi in there. What you doing? You got them. These are old. Oh, what you doing? He drinks a lot of Pepsi, you guys. Yeah. He's like... He's refilling his Pepsi supply. There's a lot of... At least this one is. Wow. 
lot of Pepsi okay. going well, you on. Should you should say hi to everybody. That? You should say hi, hi to everybody. Say hello. I'm not getting so paid to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and God knows you hate publicity. Yeah, right? right. You could at least say hello. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows how many more Twitter what followers in it for right you? There what do you mean? What is in it for you? There's 4,100 people that want to say hello to you. Yeah. Or, or, or maybe, know, they or want to know about not. your love life. Is what they want. Yeah, to know. they all want to know. That's what they're always. They asking. want to know if you're dating somebody. Like if you're doing the hibbity jibbity with somebody. That's all. That's all they want to oh, know. I know. <laughs> this is so gross. Okay, now I want you to leave. Yeah. Bye. Um, <laughs> bye. Uh, you guys, AOC won her primary. It just with seventy percent of the vote. I can't. I just she's I, here to stay. I can't because New York fourteen. I don't know what you guys are thinking, but apparently you are interested in becoming Venezuela. So that happened. That's fantastic. I just I got nothing. I got nothing. You know, um. you, cho you choose your destiny, man. <laughs> It's all up to you. Yesterday on the show, on the radio show, we were talking about that weird phenomenon that's happening right now on Google. If you put in a three-digit number mm -hmm. followed by the words new cases, any three-digit number will result in articles about coronavirus new cases in a certain area. Every single three-digit number between 100 and 999, every single number is represented. You can try it. Throw in a three-digit number followed by the words new cases, test it for yourself i don't understand it like i am baffled by why this is happening and why that's a thing because it just seems very weird it's so weird <laughs> that just between march and now every single three digit number would be represented every single one i mean doesn't yeah. that seem weird to yeah, you yeah it's weird i can't explain it I don't it's have a, an explanation. It's, it's very bizarre. And I did it, and it actually came up. Like, there were two articles, one from Texas, one from Indiana, weirdly enough. It, I did, like, 354 or something. You just, any number. Just, just came up. I was Try like, it. oh, okay, that's really strange. Hey, you guys, I we have a theory. It's a, I kind of have a theory. She has a We came up with a kind of a weird theory yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, did you forget? Yeah. So, um... So, yesterday we were talking, and I'm like, I think we're going to... Like, we are approaching... Because... Um, we were talking about how the young people in my life and the thing I lost sleep over last night and how these people, like these kids are just, it's like they've been brainwashed by professors to hate this country, right? And how every, like history needs to be rewritten and all of this garbage, right? So I was just like, I don't, it, you can't undo that. It's really hard to undo that with, with 20 somethings who hate their country. I don't understand how you undo that. And I feel this like divide forming. Like I already start, I, I can see people I can see like a split and I can see people starting to pick sides. You know what I mean? And I don't want to say, hey, we're heading towards a civil war, but we're heading towards this point in society where it's like people are picking sides. People are going this way or they're going this way. And it's happened for years, right? But I'm seeing it more and more just in my personal life. Like I can't, I, I it's hard for me to to understand the the psyche of a person who thinks it's okay to destroy this country. I just, it's hard for me to... And it's symbols. It's historical I, symbols. Yeah, it's really hard for me to get on board That's with like it. super isis -y, you guys. I just don't get that. Yeah, so anyways, I was talking about that with her yesterday, and she's like, we should just split the country in half. And I, I said... I think it's time. And I go, yeah, that would be... I, I mean, I would actually be... I mean, that's not a crazy notion to me. I could get on board with that. And if we could just get, like, Ted Cruz to be the next president with Nikki Haley, like, they could be co-presidents or something... I, that would be fine. Like if he could draft some legislation or something. <laughs> if to, it was only that easy. You know, just to say, hey, let's split the country. Conservatives will live over here and liberals will live over here and we'll be cool. I I honestly would be on board. I'd be, like she would say, down to clown with that. <laughs> I would be okay with that because I think we would be all right. And you know what? The liberals would be asking for foreign aid in like two seconds. Oh, my God. And we would give it because that's how we are, I'd right? <laughs> This is, this is how we are. We would give it because we'd be like, oh, no, oh, the those poor, poor people. people. So you can't. No, I'd be like, you guys are on your own. Man. I mean, for a while, I would be like. I, you're on your own. But then I would feel bad. And would I'd you? Because like, a lot of them would be your family members. <laughs> this is the thing. 
A lot of them would be my, a lot of you young people in my family who I'd be like, they are over there starving because they, you know, they're like, they don't know how wait, to like, food comes from the ground. <laughs> right. Because AOC, remember when she was freaked out by vegetables Jeez, and how they grow? I swear. And she's like, oh my God, I didn't know what a garbage disposal I don't was. No. Oh my God. What? Okay. The, the low was a blip. There's a low network connection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was Big Brother listening to us. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> they were like, were you talking about splitting the country in two chicks? What you are you crazy? You that. can't talk about that. You can't talk about that crazy. And we lost like 300 people like, I know what, instantaneously. I know, what was that? that? Okay, they're crazy. coming back. You guys coming back? Okay, anyway. <clears throat> so I think we should split. I think that's a logical solution. Yeah. I just don't know how that actually happens. Yeah, can we please have Texas? <laughs> Give us Texas. Give us like some of the southern. I mean, maybe we just do south and north, right? Yeah, they can have the cold states. That's all I'm saying. Because that would take care of Illinois and mm -hmm. California. I mean, give most of California and New York. All those three would be. Yeah. Give them all the California and the. Give them the crazy crap. And then y'all. Give them Hollywood. Hollywood can just. They can go. Yeah, they all y'all conservatives that are in those horrible just states. Come on over. Come we'll on over. We'll just all move come south. Come on over, baby. We will all move south together. Yeah. And it'll be fine. We'll get the better weather. Totally. Yeah. So. A lot of agriculture. It's great. We'll it'll be, be good. fine. We'll be all right. Yeah. It'll be good. It's totally fine. I mean, and listen, liberals want this. They want it too because they're setting up their autonomous zones. Mm -hmm. Well, let's let them let have, them have their, it. Let them have their autonomy. Look how well it's going in Chaz. It's the summer of love, It's you utopia, guys. man. It's utopia. <laughs> They can rewrite their history. <laughs> it's great. Uh, you guys, coronavirus is really ticking up in some states. And um, not just the cases, but the hospitalizations, which is a little scary. And so I would expect to see some states start to crack down again. And that's bad. Because ultimately, even when people are hospitalized, most of them will recover. And most people who get this virus will also recover. We're talking 97 point something even higher percentage rate of, of survival. So can we just not destroy the country even further? Well, as long as, they don't, as long as they don't shut everything down, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Like, listen, people, I just don't know. people just need to be responsible and do all the right things and try to, you know, have some personal, I guess, skin in the game when it comes to fighting this virus. We got a note from school um, yesterday just saying that a plan is being put together. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's an ever-evolving plan because, of course, this is an ever-evolving situation and that there would be accommodations made for parents of kids who are scared to send their kids to school. So, like, the option will be there to do some sort of e-learning thing. And I'm just, no, I don't, I, my kid needs to go and be around kids. Well, it's one of the, I, I was talking to a parent the other night at a swim practice, and we were talking about how, you know, shielding our kids from coronavirus is also shielding our kids from everything. Yeah. And the problem with doing that is that their immunity is going to be compromised. It's, it's compromised uh, for everything. So our kids, by the time they get back with other kids in a school setting, they're going to be screwed when it comes to the flu, when it comes to everything. So these kids are going to get sick. They're going to get sick from everything because they've not been around other kids. Because that's what happens when they go to school. They get all snotty and around each other. <laughs> and they're they're getting all the things, and that's that's what immune systems are for. That's what they're. It's so immune. That's what they do. Immune systems protect you from all the things. <laughs> and we have literally put our kids in bubbles, in bubbles by themselves, and we've protected them from all that stuff. And so their immune systems are like, oh, I can let my guard down. It's great. <laughs> that's what their immune systems are doing right now. And so it's it. I feel like it's doing that's the opposite. Bad. We're doing the opposite of what we should be doing, which is making sure that our kids' immune systems are strong and healthy. We have let, we have made our kids' immune systems so weak during this process. I just, that's how I feel. I mean, y'all can disagree with me, but that's how I, as a parent, I feel like we've done a disservice to our kids, immune, immune system-wise. 
Speaking of how these schools are going to deal, um, I saw the coolest mask yesterday, I, and I am not a fan of masks, but this one I was like, I could actually get down to clown with this if masks are a forced thing in schools. One of the things I said to my kid was, you're going to be a freshman in high school. How are you supposed to scope out the hot girls when all their faces are covered? How are girls supposed to see your gorgeous jawline? <laughs> These are my concerns, right? So I saw a mask yesterday, you guys. It's just like a regular mask, but this whole area is covered with a clear material. So essentially, you do see your whole face. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I'm totally gonna buy those because then it's like you're not covering yourself. You huh. know what I mean? You're yeah. still covered. It's like a little, you know, like a plastic clear yeah. thing. Um, and yeah. I don't know about the breathing. Like that's the only thing. I don't know how it's clear. But somehow it's clear and it's still breathable, yeah. apparently. My kid's not wearing a mask. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, there's going to be some places you may want to take her perhaps. that require it. Yeah, perhaps. So if she has to wear one yeah. in certain situations, wouldn't it be great yep. if you can still see that's, her face? Sure, but she's not wearing one eight hours a day. Not going to yeah, do that's, that. That's completely unhealthy for a child. Not doing it. That's crazy. Not doing it. Not healthy. Mm -mm. That's crazy. Nope. Um, what time is it? It's eight. So we should probably think about... Oh, um, our Dennis Miller podcast is up. The Our appearance on Dennis Miller is posted. You can see, I posted links to it. I'm going to also put it on our website. And so you should listen to it. It was actually really sweet and fun, I thought. Yeah, did you yeah. listen? Uh, I didn't listen. But somebody wrote me, actually. T two people wrote me yesterday. And they were like, I heard it. It was so great. And you guys were great. And I'm like, thank God we didn't sound like idiots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm so glad that you liked it. I haven't had a chance, because yesterday was so busy for me, but I just haven't had a chance to listen, but I will. But he was, he's just dear. He's such and, a delight. And just a, yeah, he's very lovely. I mean, that's how I would describe him. Yeah. He's just lovely. He's just a lovely man. So And he loved her Bernie impression. What are you doing? <laughs> so I actually, I actually did that. It was, it was great. That's what the I was like, The producer had asked for it specifically. Oh so God. I was like, the second Dennis says his name, I talk out. like Bernie. And I said, Dennis Miller. <laughs> Dennis Miller. That was my yeah, favorite. It was crazy. So, <laughs> we, yeah, so I did Bernie Sanders on the Dennis Miller show. It was amazing. It's not often you can say that, right? It'll be like the last time we're ever on that show. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever, we did it, right? We did it. We did it. And right. today, our podcast comes out. You guys, we, we talked had to Zuby. The best conversation was Zuby. Oh, my God. He's amazing. I love him. He's such a, just a beautiful soul. He you is. Know? That, you're right. He just is. You're right. He is a beautiful soul. And, and he's, he's also so beautiful hot. on the, he's beautiful <laughs> on the outside, too. He's, like, he's And his voice is uh, so delicious. It's like a stick of butter. You guys I don't are, know if the producer's going to leave in the part where I was like, can you please read me a bedtime story? Yeah, he got kind of embarrassed. I was like, she's not a stalker, I promise. I mean, I maybe a little. It, like, not a creepy way, yeah. but like, I just love I his voice. Well, you're probably old enough to be his mom. Yeah, I'm sure. I know, sure so, I but he's he's precious. <gasps> Speaking of people who's I'm old enough to be their mom, that guy that oh I oh my god, you, <gasps> you guys, this guy name. that won, he won some sort of political. Op what did he win? Um, he won a, a primary. A primary. He hang is on. so cute. His name. Hang on. We got to get his name for you, so hang on. women. You got to look him up. He's in a wheelchair because he had a horrible car accident when he was 18. Yeah, um, but his he's name is uh, Madison. Uh, Cawthorn in North Carolina. You guys, and look him up. And he just won primary, and he is, oh. he's in the seat that Mark Meadows is resigning from. Uh-huh. You guys gotta look him up. So hot. Women, look him up. I mean, Madison he's a little, Cawthorn. he's a little young, so it's a little creepy when you're our age and you're looking at how hot he is, but for your daughters. He's 25. And he's just so good looking. He is a cutie And I read patootie. the whole article about him. You guys, he seems so lovely. Oh, my gosh. I hope politics doesn't ruin him. Yeah, that would be Because you know bad. how politics ruins people? Yeah. Just don't. Just don't let it ruin him because he's precious. So pray that politics won't ruin him. Look him up, though. But Madison definitely Cawthorn. but look him up if you want some eye candy this morning because dang. Yeah. Madison Cawthorn. Mm -hmm. C-A-W. Um, make sure to look at him. God, he's right? Super, he's super gorgeous, cute. right, Carolyn? He's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. so, so hot. All right, we gotta go. All right. Um, so make sure to uh, subscribe to the Mock and Daisy Common Sense cast if you haven't yet. That way you'll get the notification when the Zuby interview gets posted. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're on Twitter, make sure to tweet to him. If you like the interview, um, make sure to say, hey, Zuby, I heard you on the chicks. People are saying happy birthday, Eve. Oh, thank you. It's my birthday. Today. It's her birthday. It's just Eve. one Eve now. It's like yeah. the official Eve. Uh huh. Tomorrow is her birthday. <laughs> you guys make sure you have donuts and coffee ready to go tomorrow because we're going to be celebrating her birthday here.
Okay. Yay! All right, we'll be talking some politics, but mostly we're going to be fussing over her. And, and I'm going to wear the new shirt that she got me for my actual birthday. It's yeah. so awesome. Yeah, so we'll be doing that. So excited. All right, you guys bring it in. Bring it in. Have a fantastic Wednesday. Bye. Bye.